My name is Mark Heinlein. I'm the training director for the National Tile Contractors Association. And right here to my left is Rob Roderick. He's a trainer for the NTCA. And to Rob's left is Randy Fleming. Randy is also a trainer for the NTCA. So we basically uh, create the training team along with Mr. Scott Carruthers sitting right over here. And we travel the United States training our tile industry on tile industry standards. Today, what we'll be training you on, and if you can't see from those cheap seats, we'd love you to come up a little bit closer, all right? We won't be mean to you. We'll try not to get you dirty, so come on up here because we're gonna be working on this wall right back here. Grab a seat, grab a stool, stand around, do what you'd like, get comfortable. Um, we're gonna get this done, we'll wrap it up, and then lunch will be served so your timing is excellent. But today, what we will be talking about is substrate prep for walls and setting large format tile and in this case particularly plank tile long plank tile so we have some four foot tile randy could you show us the plank tile that we'll be setting today so this right here is an 8 by 48 plank tile and that's considered a large format tile because a tile that has one side 15 inches or longer requires a tighter substrate flatness tolerance than tile that's smaller than that. Smaller tiles need a quarter of an inch in 10 feet minimum from the high spots to the low spots for the flatness that's required before we can set that tile. Uh, Rob or Randy, could you show us the straight edge there? And this right here, if you haven't seen one of these before, that's a 10 foot straight edge. This is the device that every single tile contractor needs to own because before you install your tile, you need to place that on your wall, you need to place it on your floor in a variety of locations to see if you have any high spots or low spots that are outside that tolerance for flatness. And again, for the smaller tile, it's a quarter of an inch variation in 10 feet. For this larger tile that we have today, it's an eighth of an inch. We double down on that. We tighten it up on that, on that by a, an eighth of an inch, right? So that we have a flatter substrate. The whole point of having a nice flat substrate is to make sure that we get the coverage we need and the bond coat support for that tile to the substrate. So the process we're going to do today is we're going to check our wall for flatness. Guys, what have you come up with here? Okay. So we're finding a classic case from, uh, you know, we've got a stud wall behind there and, you know, we love carpenters, but have you ever walked into a job and seen a stud that was maybe shifted to the back or shifted to the front and then maybe the prep, the, the uh, backer board was installed before you get there and what did they do? They uh, sucked that backer board right up to that recessed stud or else it bumps out and we end up with a substrate that's out of tolerance. Well, what we did the other day when our carpenter built this wall, and I happen to know the carpenter, it was us. So what we did is we already flattened that side on the right-hand side that you're looking at over there. And what we did over there, because we had a fairly low spot, we used a material like this. This one right here has some aggregate in it. It could go a little bit deeper and a wider area. And we were able to get it applied screed it off and we ended up with that great flat substrate you see on the right on top of our cement board. Over here on the left, what they're doing is using some of this product. This one right here uh, has a much finer aggregate to it. They, and, and it can still fill a deep depth, but we're using this uh, a smaller bag, a smaller amount to fill that smaller area. So what Randy is doing there on the left He's applying it to the wall, and he'll be taking that L-screed and screeding it off, rotting it off to get that nice and flat. Now, both of these products are a rapid setting material. So when we do this, it's a very inexpensive way to make our substrate flat 
and we won't be wasting any time standing around waiting for it to cure because it'll cure and be ready to tile in a very short period of time. So what Rob is over here doing on the right, you know, a hallmark of a great tile contractor, a great tile installer and setter is that they make wise use of their time. Time is money, right? We never go two directions empty handed. We always take something everywhere we're going. We always have a plan six, seven steps ahead of ourselves, right? So what we're doing here, Rob and Randy are working as a team and on the right, while Randy was applying the patch to the low spot in the wall, Rob was over there on the right hand side of the wall that was already flat and he was doing what we call SSD. That's a fancy little acronym for saturated surface dry. So we have a very thirsty substrate there, right? And that's a good thing. We want our mortar, our bond coat that we're mixing to grab and bond into that substrate and hold. Well, if we have a very thirsty substrate, after we've mixed our mortar and we apply that mortar to a very thirsty substrate, it's going to drag the hydration, the water, out of our mortar and the chemical properties will change as it cures. Maybe it won't have the right shear strength anymore. It won't be as effective as it was. So what Rob did, he dampened the substrate with a little bit of water, drove some water back in, just such that it was saturated, but the surface was dry. There was no puddling or pooling. Now, when he applies the mortar to the wall, it won't be dragging the properly uh, uh, hydrated hydration out of our mortar. So you can see they're working as a, a really good team together. Today, we're only going to be tiling the bottom section of the wall. Each of the next three days, we'll be tiling successfully or successively higher installation. So we're just doing the bottom part today. How's it coming guys? Good. Okay, so they're just finishing up nice and flat. They're ready to go and we have a ledger on the bottom. We're going to be working off of a ledger and bringing our tile up. We, with this large format with this 8 by 48 plank tile there's another discussion in our tile industry standards found in ANSI A108 that talks about layout. It talks about running bond, right? So when the tile is manufactured, it goes through a kiln. And as it goes through that kiln, part of the process is it heats up to a very high temperature. For porcelain tile, around 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot, right? So it's got to heat up pretty rapidly, and then as it heads for the end of the kiln, it cools down. Through that process, the kiln heat is very even, but with a little bit of unevenness, there can create some warpage in the tile. So have you ever seen a tile that is bowed like this? That's just the natural process of the, the uh, operation of the manufacture of tile. Tile that's manufactured in accordance with one of our standards, that standard is called ANSI A137.1, has a limited or a limit to the amount of that warpage it can have, okay? So when we have that tile that meets that standard or falls under that standard, and if we have a substrate that's flattened to meet our industry standard, then our next step is to select the right mortar, the right trowel to get that right coverage on our substrate to make sure we have an excellent bond. So that the final step is the layout to determine that we're not having that warpage, a high spot in the warpage, meet a low spot at the end of its neighboring tile. So what does our standard have us do? It has us not do a 50% offset. Okay, so tiles that have one side 15 inches or longer, when you do a, an offset pattern, you don't do a 50% offset because what that does is it puts your high spot right next to the low spot of its neighboring tile and you end up with lippage. Lippage is the height difference between two adjacent tiles, okay? There are limits to how much lippage you can have based on that same tile industry standard that I'm talking about. Am I making sense here? Does this come through? Okay, so the lippage can only be 
a 32nd of an inch. Now that's a 32nd of an inch of human error. I'm gonna finish explaining this. If I have tile that meets our ANSI standard, and I set it next to another tile that meets the ANSI standard, and if I do the offset that meets the ANSI standard, a 33% offset, or another one that was required by the manufacturer of the tile, then that actual warpage that might be in that tile is acceptable, plus an additional 30 second of an inch, 1 32nd of an inch, and that's my human error as an installer that I'm allowed. So Randy and Rob are tremendous installers, okay? They're going to be able to get this set with this tile that meets the standard, and they'll be able to get it right in there, okay? So the actual warpage, if any, that's in that tile, plus a 32nd of an inch human error that's allowed for them, that is defined as acceptable or allowable warpage per the industry standard. I want you to know this because the wrong time to learn this is after that wall is installed. And the owner, the architect, the GC comes up and says, huh, what's this? And then I get a phone call and that phone call is, hey Mark, is there a standard for lippage? <laughs> Too late to find out, right? So that contractor, and we do get these calls, they find out later that yes, there is a standard and how all this works. So guys, here's what they're doing now. I wanna show you what they're doing. Um, Rob has keyed into the substrate, right? He's taken the flats. Let, let's, let's listen a little bit to the noise Rob is making. Can you guys hear that noise? That's the noise we want to hear. That means Rob is using the edge of that trowel to force that mortar in a very thin layer into that substrate. And it's giving it that bond into the pores of the substrate, right? Now, what they've done is they've gauged on some mortar and Randy, could you hold up that tile, please, so everybody can see it, okay? And Rob, do you have your trowel there? Could you show them on the back of this tile the direction that your ridges, because it's hard for them to see down below. That's the direction that the ridges run, okay? And they go parallel to the short side of the tile. This is the short side of the tile. This is the long side of the tile. Sometimes with installers, we have to get a little elementary, okay? Now, why we do that? Because we're giving the air that's underneath there the shortest path to escape. So what they're going to do next is Rob has troweled on some quarter by quarter inch um, trowel marks, some ridges. Now, Randy is using those handles, those suction cups, and he's placing it in He's forcing that tile in, and he's using those handles to shift it back and forth. He's collapsing those ridges. He's using a quarter inch by quarter inch square notch trowel, which means he has to shift it a quarter of an inch this way, back to the center, quarter inch this way, back to the center. Boom. Then what we're going to do, we're gonna pull it off and check coverage. We're gonna call this a dry area. In a dry area, our standards say we need 80% coverage. How did we do, Rob? I think we're a little bit short of that. We're a little bit short of the coverage, right? And, and I don't know if you can see this, but what I can see right up close here is I know we used a quarter by quarter notch trowel, okay? And this is an eight inch tile. So we've got where we had contact here, but no contact right there. So we have to have 80%. I know that this is a quarter of an inch wide by eight inches long. If I do the math, that's worth two square inches. If I count up all of those that I see and I count up the uh, total number of square inches in this, I can do the inverse and come up with a percentage of coverage I had. That ain't enough. That's not 80%. So what Randy's doing already is he's shifted gears. He's done what every great tile installer does. He up sized his trowel. He got rid of that quarter by quarter because that wasn't big enough for that particular tile. So he went up to the next size trowel and this time he selected a quarter inch by three eighths. So he added some more depth to that notch which means he's getting more mortar on his substrate. And what Randy's doing, he is holding his trowel at a very consistent 45 degree angle. And this is a 45 degree angle right here. 
as we go around the country training people about trowels and how to hold them, it's kind of like breaking news sometimes that a trowel is designed to be held at a 45 degree angle, just like this. That's how they're held. Lower, you get less, more you get too much, and the system doesn't work correctly, and it has to be consistent along the entire spread. So what they've got now is they've got it spread with a quarter by three eighths going on there. Randy's got his suction cup supplied to the tile. He's putting it in place. He's shifting it back and forth to collapse those ridges, putting some force on it. Pull that off, Randy. Let's see what we got, sir. Okay, now remember, we upsized the trowel. This is the only thing we've changed. Rob, how are we doing, sir? Short spill. You can see right here in the middle. All right. So, yep. So what we have here, you can see we're making pretty good contact over here. Pretty good contact. I don't know if you guys can see that because it's white on white. Pretty good here, pretty good here. Not so great there. So a couple of things could be going on. That means that this tile, it falls within that ANSI standard for warpage, but there may be some warpage in this tile, okay? It could mean that our substrate isn't quite flat enough, but I know that our substrate is flat because we checked it. It's flat. So what's the problem, Rob? We need to upsize our trowel. We're gonna upsize our trowel one more time. Do you have one over there to upsize to? Not only do we have one, but he's using it. He's already using it. These guys are efficient. What do you got going on there, sir? Okay, so Randy's went with a different style of trowel, and I'm going to hold that up when he's done and show it to you. So uh, one of the things that we want you to do is if you're only familiar with square notch trowels, I mean, they're fine, right, for most tiling. But in this day and age, there's a lot of other trowels that are uh, a different type. And Randy's using one from a manufacturer, and it's called a flow ridge or a slant notch trowel. And they come in different sizes, a six, an eight, and a 10 millimeter. And they're designed where the ridges uh, have a very narrow joint in between them, and they're designed to collapse or fall over on themselves very easily. So we're gonna give that one a try to see if we get our 80% coverage again. Now, you're taking a fresh tile there off of our stack of tile. Randy's supplying suction cups. And I, I wanna tell you that if you're installing these very popular plank tiles, go to our tool manufacturers, buy suction cups today. Tiles don't come with handles. And I watch people as I'm training them, trying to press on that tile and move it with their fingers. They got no friction here, right? Get those suction cups, add handles, and then you can move that to shift the ridges, whether it's on the floor or the wall. It's a great tool, order them, buy them here at the show. So that's what Randy's done, he's pulling it off. We've got, I believe, the eight millimeter floor ridge trowel, was that it? And now, let's take our test. Much improved coverage. So I'll, I'll let you know what we're seeing because it might be kind of hard for you to see. We've got great coverage up here, great coverage down here, just a little bit of trouble area right in here. So that's probably a combination of that actual allowable warpage in this tile and maybe a little bit of a low spot that we left behind in our substrate. We got one more step we can do. Yeah, back weathering, and that's recommended for all large format tiles. Uh, back weathering is recommended as a requirement if you get the coverage right. So if you can get the coverage without back weathering, that's right. So what Rob just said, in case you couldn't hear him, he's absolutely correct. It is recommended to back butter this very large file. By back buttering, what we mean is keying in the mortar into the back of the tile, just like Rob did to the substrate. I'm not talking about this big old gloppy thick coat of mortar. Nope. I'm talking about just this thin little skim coat of mortar on the back of that tile. And what that does is it aids in the transfer of the mortar from the substrate to the back of the tile when we're shifting it back and forth. So what you've seen us do so far is flatten the substrate, key into the substrate. Well, first of all, we dampened our substrate. We keyed in our mortar. We tried it with one size trowel. We tried it with the next size trowel. We tried it with the next size trowel and we had 
successful, successive improvement. Now what we're going to do is take that next step. We back buttered it into the tile. Randy's got us trawled up over there with that last trowel that we used. Now we're gonna test again and, and see how we're coming along. So Randy's applying it, he's right on top of our ledger, shifting it back and forth. He's able to put some pressure on that tile because he has those suction cups as handles. I'm telling you, they're a great tool. All right, you got it, Randy? Okay, let's see what we got. Have you guys seen this progression so far, right? Bam, nailed it. Okay, we're shooting for 80% coverage. We ended up with 100% coverage, darn near 95% or more. And that could be installed in a wet area, which is the type of coverage we need for a wet area, okay? So 95% coverage there, we've got it. So now, what we've done on the first tile of our job, while they continue working, they're gonna go ahead and reinstall that, guys, and continue working. What they've done, I'm gonna recap this for you, and this is what you have to do. They selected the mortar. I haven't talked a lot about the mortar that we're using here because it's not part of this, but they selected the right mortar for their job. They selected a large and heavy tile mortar with thixotropic properties. That means it's got non-sag properties to hold it on the wall and support that very heavy tile. All right, so we selected that. We mixed it by reading the manufacturer's instructions on the back of the bag, how much water, the speed to mix, how long to mix, how long to let it slake, how long to let it, how long to remix it. Then we brought it out here and we selected the right trowel for the job. You saw that whole process. We dampened our substrate, we flattened our substrate, and then we, our first tile, we went through the successive steps to make sure we got at least 80% coverage, right? So you saw that, that's how you do it. Then we can get to work. Now, the next part of getting to work is what Rob and Randy are doing, and we've pre-cut some tile. We've made sure that we're not going to install a 50% offset with this tile because this is larger than 15 inches on one side. So what they're doing is installing third cut pieces. We've got some pieces cut to two thirds and pieces cut to one third. We're going to give this layout, this bond, a 33% offset. And that is what our industry standards require for this type of installation. So what Randy has done, he's reinstalled that full-size tile on our bottom course, and they're working from right to left in this case because we're great tile contractors and installers. We have our sequencing down. We're many steps ahead of ourselves already, right? So we've got our plat patch over here curing, right, on our left. So as that's curing rapidly, now we can work from right to left. We found our right coverage, and we're, we'll be able to tile on. So he's got, he'll be able to step aside in a couple of minutes and you can see what they've done. He's got the full tile down below. He's got a, uh, a two thirds tile above and a one third tile above that. And we have a 33% offset bond that they're running. So what Rob is doing, now this is really the great part. And this is ultimately the point of this demonstration. That patch that they applied 20 minutes ago, just mixed it up, came out here, applied it 20 minutes ago, is ready for tile. Rob is keying it into that patch, using that uh, flow ridge trowel, that eight millimeter flow ridge, and he'll be troweling his ridges up and installing the next full tile in line. We did not skip a beat. It didn't take us a single extra minute of time to flatten our substrate and make it correct. Does that make sense to everybody? Wow, it's just really a great way to go. What we're going to do is we're gonna allow them to apply this next tile, install that next tile, and then we'll have them get one more on top of that so we, you can come up here and take a look at the bond that we're talking about and you'll still be able to see the patch. Once we've gone through that process of selecting that trowel, the work just flies. 
once we've gone through the process of flattening our substrate, the work just flies. I have contractors come up to me and ask me, hey Mark, or they say to me, hey Mark, you know, I get what you're hearing, but all that takes time. All that takes money. Well, yeah, you know, we need to get paid for our time and materials to make the substrate flat and do the job right. So that has to be expected by all parties involved with the installation. Has to happen. I have some contractors come up to me and say, you know what, Mark, that I do? I just throw some globs of mortar under that tile where I know that low spot is and I press it in and then I'm good to go and I'm moving along. Oh, and if I have a little bit too much under there, I pull that tile off and I scrape it off and then I press it in and then pretty soon I've got mortar all over my pants and everywhere and I've wasted five, 10 minutes installing one tile. They don't tell me that, but that's what I'm hearing because that's what I see. When we take this less than a minute of time, I'm gonna estimate that it took and just a couple bucks of material to flatten that substrate, now we don't have to add and take away mortar. Now we don't have any of that guesswork. Now we just trowel that mortar on and we set tile. We actually make up time and get the job installed better and faster. That's why these are the industry standard best practices and methods to install tile. This is one of my favorite things to teach our installers and the audiences that we see around the United States. This is the type of installation that a qualified labor, a qualified contractor will install. And how do you know you have a qualified contractor, qualified labor on your job? Well, that means they meet some requirements. There may be a journeyman tile setter with one of our unions. You can see these people over here to my right in the corner, talk to them. Or it means that they're a certified or advanced certified tile installer like I am. I'm a CTI number 1112. That means I'm qualified labor. And I'm very proud of that because if you know somebody that has that designation, that means that they have put themselves through a very rigorous testing process. They've taken a written test that shows that they understand these industry standards that I've been talking about. They own them, they've read them, they apply them in their jobs, and they know how to put them to work to achieve the level of expertise that Randy and Rob are showing us here today. So qualified labor is journeyman, certified tile installer, and advanced certified tile installer. Those are the people who should get this work, do this work, and they are the people that will install long-lasting, excellent tile installations. Let's take a look at how these guys are doing. They've already decided that they're troweling it like I described. Rob's going ahead, back buttering this tile. They'll install it and now they're on their way to making money. This is what it's all about right here. Guys, we'll have you install that one last tile. Does anybody have any questions for me? Do all of you install tile this way? Do we have any installers in the audience? Yep, good to have you guys. Do we have any architects in the audience? Wonderful, glad you're here. Designers, any salespeople? Awesome, we're all part of the tile industry. We all need to know about these things, right? Because we all need to know each other's jobs and where we fit in and these processes it takes to do the job great because that's our ultimate goal. We want to have something that other people will see right? That the owners of this job, the users of this job will enjoy for years and years to come. And if it's in a public area, the general public will see that and they'll say, hey, I want tile in my next construction project. That's what makes it a success for everybody. So guys, why don't you wrap it up there? Come on over here, please. That looks great, Rob. Randy, you can leave that right there for a second, sir. Rob, if you could come right over here, stand right there if you would. Guys, help me give Rob and Randy a round of applause. Thank you very much, Job. Great job, guys. Thank you. And thank you. Come see us tomorrow. We'll do the next one. Later today, we're doing some gauged porcelain installation.